Welcome dear audience, students and scholars here I am Dr. Ramjad Ali in this video I will explain the concept of multicollinearity in this video we will learn about the definitions of multicollinearity the deduction methods for the multicollinearity kinds of the multicollinearity and the removal methods for the multicollinearity dear scholars as we know that one of the main assumptions of uh, OLS that is that there is no correlation between the explanatory variables you can call the independent variables have no correlation with one another and if the independent variables have correlation with one another so this is known as multicollinearity here we have uh, mentioned that an implicit assumption is that made when using the OLS estimation method is that the explanatory variables are not correlated with one another and if there is no relationship between the explanatory variable they would be said to be orthogonal to one another <clears throat> if the explanatory variables were orthogonal to one another adding or removing a, a variable from a regression equation would not cause the values of the coefficient on the other variable to change like we have a regression model y is equal to alpha plus beta x1 plus beta beta 2 x2 okay like that <clears throat> if our explanatory variables are orthogonal so by removing x2 or by removing x1 the coefficient beta beta 1 and beta 2 will not normally change so if they change there may be the issue of the multicollinearity. If they not change, then we can call it orthogonal and there is no issue of the multicollinearity. Okay, a problem occurs when explanatory variables are very highly correlated with one another or each other and this problem is known as multicollinearity. Okay, consequences of the multicollinearity when there is multicollinearity in our our, uh, uh, among our explanatory variable the estimates of the OLS coefficient may be imprecise in the sense that large standard error lead to wider confidence interval. Affected coefficients may fail to attain statistical significance due to low t statistic which may lead to us a to us to wrongly drop an inferential variable from our regression model and the sign of the coefficient uh, estimated coefficient may be opposite uh, of those we are expecting so if there is a multicollinearity then if we are expecting that the sign of uh, 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 independent variable x1 is uh, is positive but when we estimate uh, its coefficient then the sign of uh, uh, x1 is negative then there uh, may be the chance that we have a multicollinearity between x1 and x2 or x1 and or x3 okay the addition or deletion of a few observation may not may result in substantial changes in the estimated coefficient if we have a, a wide range of data from uh, uh, x1 and x2 like that so we have a time series like, like we have a time series data and if we remove some of the observation from x1 so if the coefficient is coefficients are not changing then there is a, a no chance of uh, less chance you can say less chance of multicollinearity between x1 and x2 okay there are two main types of multicollinearity first one is the perfect multicollinearity second one is the imperfect uh, multicollinearity or near multicollinearity let's explain the perfect multicollinearity perfect multicollinearity occurs when there is an exact relationship between the two or more variables in this case it is not possible to estimate all of the coefficient coefficients in the model perfect multicollinearity will be usually observed only when the same explanatory variable is unintentionally used twice in a regression to understand the multicollinearity uh, consider we have a model here we have y is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 
plus u here we have a simple multiple linear regression model here we have two independent variable x2 and x3 so where we are a hypothetical uh, 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 assume that x2 and x3 uh, are, are uh, independent variable and we have the data of x1 uh, x2 and x3 here so see here we uh, we can easily observe that x3 uh, if we if we multiply x2 by 2 then we get the x3 so this mean that x3 is the linear uh, uh, you can say that the uh, 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 the linear multiplication of x2 so this information provide uh, the information provided by x3 is not distinct from x2 because x3 is generated from x2 okay this is because we have seen that x3 is an exact linear function of x2 so uh, this shows that there is a multicollinearity issue in our data okay when this situation occurs x2 and x3 are said to be linear dependent which implies that x2 and x3 are perfectly collinear more formally two variable x2 and x3 are linear linearly depend if one variable can be expressed as a linear function of the other variable if both x 3 and x2 were used as an explanatory variable in the same regression like we have mentioned here like if we are using x2 and x3 in the same regression then then the model parameters cannot be uh, estimated uh, they, 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 they gone uh, a bias estimate estimators since the two variables are perfectly related to one another together they contain only enough information to estimate one parameter or not two technically the difficulty would occur in try in trying to convert uh, when we are converting uh, x uh, multiply by x transpose uh, uh, or you can say that x prime metric since it would not be a full rank uh, you can say that uh, the two of the column would not be linearly depend on one another so this so that the inverse of uh, x transpose and x would not ex would not exist and hence the ol estimate uh, estimates beta hat is equal to beta beta uh, uh, x multiplied by x prime whole inverse multiplied by x y could not be calculated so this uh, technically this is the main uh, 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 assumptions uh, that the estimated beta uh, is uh, equal to the actual beta so this will not uh, this will not happen so that's why the uh, multicollinearity uh, will not enable us to fulfill our assumption actual beta is equal to estimated beta Consequences of uh, uh, perfect multicollinearity. Perfect multicollinearity will usually be observed only when the same explanatory variable is unintentionally used twice in a regression. The consequences of, uh, of uh, perfect multicollinearity are extreme, extremely serious. But perfect multicollinearity seld seldom arises with actual data. This is a, a normally a, a rare case when we have to face uh, perfect multicollinearity. The occurrence of perfect multicollinearity often result from um, correctable mistakes such as the dummy variable trap or including we if, if we include the log of uh, x and x square in the same equation we are using the uh, 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 ln model as an independent variable and x square is also uh, as an explanatory variable so this is uh, this create a perfect multicollinearity in our model okay under perfect multicollinearity no estimation method can provide us unique estimates for the population parameters okay here we have the second type of the multicollinearity that is near multicollinearity or imperfect multicollinearity Okay, imperfect multicollinearity exists when the explanatory variable in an equations are correlated, but this correlation is less than perfect relation. Imperfect multicollinearity is such 
uh, you can say that is much more likely to occur in practice and would arise when there are not negligible but not perfect relationship between two or more of the explanatory variables so uh, normally when we are using the macro level data so there are chances of uh, imperfect or near multicollinearity okay note that a high correlation between the dependent variable and one of the independent variable is not always known as a multicollinearity normally we can not uh, uh, say that uh, if a dependent variable or independent variable are correlated so this mean this doesn't mean that they are uh, there is a, a multicollinearity this may be another issue but we cannot uh, uh, interpret as a multicollinearity okay uh, uh, visually we could not think of the difference between the near and a perfect multicollinearity as follow that suppose that uh, you have a, a variable x2t and x3t were highly correlated and if we produce a scatter plot of x2 and x3 against uh, uh, then perfect multicollinearity will correspond to all of the point lying exactly on a straight line while in perfect multicollinearity would correspond to the point uh, point lying close to the line and the closer they are uh, they were uh, one to the line the stronger would be the relationship between the two variable like we have uh, here uh, x uh, x3 and x2 are two are independent and variable and if we plot uh, plot them like if the graphical presentation look like this uh, look like this we can call it a strong or perfect multicollinearity and if the graphical presentation uh, between x2 and x3 would like that so we can call it a, a near multicollinearity weak multicollinearity or imperfect multicollinearity okay measuring uh, near or perfect multicollinearity testing for the multicollinearity is a surprisingly very difficult task but uh, the simplest method is correlation matrix if the regression model include three explanatory variables or independent variable it is the pairwise correlation which decide the existence or non-existence of multicollinearity among the explanatory variable for example here we have x dependent variable and uh, sorry a dependent variable and b and c and d are are independent variable and here we see that uh, uh, the correlation between a and the other explanatory variable here we, we see that uh, the dependent variable d has a very high correlation and c has a high correlation but b has a very uh, or you can say the v correlation with with a but this uh, column does not present there is a multicollinearity here you see that uh, the relationship between the b and d is 0.6 it is not so high 0 0.76 it it normally it is also not known uh, this is a very not a high relationship between uh, c and d like this so this uh, this uh, present there is a no issue of the multicollinearity but if we have like this type of relationship that you see here we have a, a, a 0 0.96 uh, correlation between c and d so here we can interpret that C and D has a multicollinearity issue. So uh, it is the correlation matrix which enable us to overview the uh, existence and non-existence of multicollinearity among our explanatory variable. So C here is not a strong uh, correlation between our, our explanatory variable so we can say that there is a no issue of multicollinearity but here we have a, a a strong correlation between c and d we can call it a there is a multicollinearity issue in our uh, in our model or you can say that between our explanatory variable d and c okay problems if near are uh, are imperfect multicollinearity if, uh, is present but we ignore it First, R square will be high, but individual coefficient will have a uh, uh, will have a high standard error, so that the regression look uh, look like a, uh, it is a good as a whole. But the individual variables are not significant. Like we have a model here, like we have uh, y dependent variable here. We have constant beta one x one plus beta two. 
x2 so on so if we have a r uh, estimated r scale which is very high for our like we have a 0 0.09 so this mean that our overall mar, mar, uh, independent variables have a very good explanatory power but our beta 1 or beta 2 are insignificant so this uh, uh, create the issue of the multicollinearity between x2 uh, x3 or x1 uh, and x2 this arises in the context of very closely related explanatory variable as a consequences of uh, of you can say that the difficult uh, difficulty to observing the individual contribution of each variable to the overall fit of the regression second the regression become very sensitive to small changes in the uh, specification so that adding or uh, removing an explanatory variable leads to a large change in the coefficient value or significance of the variable so if we uh, if we have the multi uh, multicollinearity in, in our model then by adding or by removing uh, variable in this model the r square will also uh, changes so this will uh, create the issue of the multicollinearity okay finally near um, uh, multicollinearity will thus make confidence interval for the parameters uh, very wide and significant tests might therefore give inappropriate conclusion and and uh, and on the basis of these result we cannot uh, 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 make the uh, correct inferences or we cannot make the uh, um, you can say that uh, reasonable policy implications in the presence of the multicollinearity in our model okay solution to the problems of multicollinearity the first one uh, keep it in mind that the multicollinearity is a sample issue not the population issue when issue when you are using the whole population uh, in your uh, analysis then uh, you can uh, completely ignore the multicollinearity issue so keep it in mind that the multicollinearity issue is a pop uh, is a sample issue not a population issue draw one of the collinear uh, collinear variables so like that we are explaining in our uh, correlation matrix if we see that uh, uh, d and c are highly correlated so you have it is better uh, for the solution of the multicollinearity you have to remove one of the independent or one of the explanatory variable from your model so this will uh, solve the issue of the multicollinearity in your model okay next you have to tra transfer the uh, transfer the highly correlated uh, va variables into ratio form you can take the log of the of uh, of your variables or you, you can select the data of the those variables in a ratio form or in a growth form so the multicollinearity issue can be resolved okay near multicollinearity is a more a problem with the data uh, than the model so normally it is uh, it, uh, when when we uh, increase the number of observation uh, for our model then the multicollinearity issue can be easily resolved while uh, uh, while uh, the near when we are uh, indulge in a near multicollinearity issue so keep it in mind that while increasing the number of observation near uh, multicollinearity or imperfect multicollinearity automatically be removed okay more important are the last solution is that ignore it so keep in mind that more of the macroeconomic variables are highly correlated or you know that are nearly correlated or you can you can say that the, uh, somehow uh, macroeconomic variables are correlated with one another so when we are using the macroeconomic variables so uh, a uh, number of econometricians and statisticians say that ignore the multicollinearity if they if it is not a uh, 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 highly correlated uh, are not presenting the high correlation uh, among the variables so keep it in mind that macroeconomic variables somehow uh, correlated with one another so it is uh, the best solution for the macroeconomic variable is to ignore the multicollinearity okay this is all about the multicollinearity see you with another video ciao